Hey guys, it's Mr. David here and we are here for another Sunday morning lesson time and I cannot wait to jump in. This is going to be a fun one. It's one of the coolest stories in the Bible. It's the burning bush. So what? We're going to have fire. We're going to have all kinds of cool stuff to talk about and we're going to jump right into that after we do our worship. So let's pray, do our worship, and then we'll come back and I've got a little bit of stuff to talk about. Okay, so here we go. God, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you so much that you came to be a man, that you died on the cross, that you took our sins away, and that we can meet with you every day and talk to you just like Moses was able to talk to you in the burning bush. Lord, I pray that through our lesson today, we remember that you love us, that you care about us, and that you want to talk with us. God, we love you. We praise you. Amen. 
All right, guys, we're jumping into worship. Here we go.
Great job with worship, guys. I, I love it. I love worshiping you every week. I love worshiping God because He's worthy of it. He's worth our worship and our praise. If we believe that God exists, if we believe that Jesus is God, then every week we should be jumping with joy. We should be singing and laughing and praising Him because He's worthy of it. Not necessarily because we love it or because we get a lot out of it, but because He deserves it. So that's why I'm so thankful that you guys do that worship with me. I have a question for you today, and, and I don't know that anybody will have an answer. What do you think God is like? What do you think he's like? Some people, when you talk about what do you think somebody's like, they, they, they start describing what they look like. Like Some people might think God's like this. It's like an old guy with a bald head, a big beard, and a robe? Maybe. I don't know. Some people think he's like a big cloud that just is fluffy and and just floats around or like a, you know, something like that. I don't I don't really know. And in the Bible he shows up a lot of times like a like fire. Our story today is Moses in a burning bush where the bush is on fire, but it's not burning. And God speaks to him through that burning, to Moses through that burning bush. And then later on after that, God shows up as a pillar of fire. He, he shows up as smoke. I, 
I'm not 100% sure. But usually when you're asking the question, what does God look like, or what, what is somebody like, it's not always about what they look like. It's about who they are. You might know who LeBron J what LeBron James looks like, right? But you don't probably don't know who he is. You don't you haven't hung out with him. He's not super close to you. You're not best friends, right? Or or maybe the president. You don't you don't know the president. You might know of him if you saw a picture of him or Abraham Lincoln or or anybody like that. You might recognize them in a picture, but you don't know them. But we know God. We know God because Jesus came to earth and there's this whole book written about him and we can spend time with him every day. Just like Moses spent time with God talking to, the, to him through the burning bush, we can spend time every day talking to God. Let's watch this video and we'll come back and we'll talk a little more. God's story, Moses. So part of God's story is about a guy named Moses, and it begins like this. When Moses was born, God's special family, the Israelites, were living in Egypt as slaves. But there were so many Israelites that Pharaoh, Egypt's ruler, was afraid they might attack him. So he ordered that they work extra hard and made a law that all new baby boys had to be killed. Well, baby Moses' mom didn't want him to die, so she came up with a plan. She put him in a waterproof basket and hid it in the Nile River. Before long, Pharaoh's daughter, the princess, showed up. She found the basket and realized Moses was one of the babies her dad was trying to kill. But instead of hurting Moses, she adopted him. He grew up in the palace like a prince. Now Moses should have felt really special and loved, but he felt bad that his people were slaves while he lived in the palace. So he ran away and tried to help them. Problem is, they didn't want a prince around. Moses didn't feel like he belonged anywhere, so he ran away again. This time, he went to a place called Midian. There, he married a lady named Zipporah and worked for her dad, Jethro. One day, he was taking care of Jethro's sheep when he saw a bush on fire. As Moses looked more closely, the inside of the bush called out, Moses, Moses. Kids, would you answer a burning bush that yells your name? Well, Moses did. He said, here I am. Then the bush introduced itself. It was God appearing as fire. And God told Moses that he could see how his family was suffering as slaves. Since God loves his family, he wanted to rescue them through Moses. Now you'd think Moses would be excited since he had wanted to help his people, but he wasn't. He didn't think he was special enough to get a job from God. He said, why me? God reminded him, I'll be with you. He even told Moses exactly what to say to the Egyptians. But Moses didn't think anyone would believe that God had appeared to a regular guy like him, a guy who didn't even belong anywhere. So God gave Moses three miracles to prove that God was with him. First, God let Moses turn his staff into a snake and back. Next, Moses put his hand in his cloak. It came out with leprosy. Then he did it again to cure it. Finally, God showed Moses how to turn water into blood. But even after God showed him all this, Moses was still afraid that nobody would listen to him. I don't talk well, he said. I stutter and stammer. Then God asked Moses, who makes a man able to talk? God is the one who makes us. And he wanted Moses to remember that and trust him. But Moses begged, please send anybody else. Fortunately, God loves us even when we're afraid to trust him and we don't realize how special we are to him. He let Moses bring his brother Aaron along to do the talking. After that, Moses finally realized he belonged in God's family. He didn't have to run away anymore, so he obeyed God and followed him. He took his wife and sons to Egypt to tell the Israelites that God was going to rescue them. The Israelites believed that God was with Moses, and they were so excited to be rescued that they worshiped God right away. And that's the story of Moses. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God's family lived in Egypt. They were slaves. Pharaoh said baby boys must die. Moses' mom had a plan. Moses was adopted. He ran away. Moses returned to his people. He ran away. God appeared as fire. Moses argued with God. Finally, Moses obeyed. 
He knew he belonged in God's family. And that's a part of God's story. What a cool story. I mean, it would be awesome to be able to experience something like that. To be able to experience seeing that burning bush. To be able to see, to talk to God. Have him tell me, take off your sandals because you're on holy ground. It would be incredible. And I would love to experience something like that. But what's cool is we even have it better than Moses had. We might say, oh, that was so cool, but Moses would love to have what we have, which is at any time we can go and talk to God and we can know that he will hear our, our prayers and answer them because Jesus came and died and took our sins away. We know we can be with God because we're made pure through Jesus Christ. It's absolutely incredible. And what's really cool is, yeah, that that ground was, God called that ground holy ground because that's where God was. But did you know what? God lives inside of you now. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is God's son, and you believe that, that he was God and that he died and took your sins away and rose from the grave and he lives in heaven and he's coming back, if you believe that, you are holy. But what I want you to do is, is look at somebody else. I want you to either look at your left, look at your right. Look at somebody else, whether in the room or in another room or how, whatever it is. I want you to look at that person and I want you to think this. That person is more holy than any other place on earth whether it's your brother or sister, whether it's somebody in class, maybe it's a parent, they are more holy than where Moses was because they have God living inside of them. How amazing is that? And you have God living inside of you when you accept him into your heart. And when you do that, You'll get to know him, you'll get to pray, and you'll get to spend time with him, and he'll show you the direction you should go, just like he did with Moses. We don't have to go to a special place to find God. We don't have to go to church to find God. We don't have to do... God is there, and he's just waiting on us to come and pray for with him, to come and talk to him. That's why prayer is so important. It's our opportunity to get to know God. And it's why reading the Bible is so important. is because it's our opportunity to read and learn about God. So as you go throughout your day, I want you to remember this. God wants to talk to you. Just like he wanted to talk to Moses. God has a special plan for you just like he had for Moses. God loves you just like he loved Moses and the Israelites' people, and he wants to take away your sins. He wants you to, to remove those sins from your life, to take the slavery of sin away. Just like he did for the Israelites when they left slave, the slavery in Egypt. You are so loved. God cares about you so much. He wants to spend all of his time with you. And all he asks us to do is to believe and spend our time with him. Absolutely incredible. So remember that. Remember to pray. Remember to read your Bible, to spend time with God. He's listening and he'll answer you and, and not always in a voice or, or not always right away. But I promise he will answer you. So go out in your week. Pray. Read your Bible. Tell people about Jesus. Think about him throughout your entire day and remember how much he loves you. Guys, I hope you had a great week. I hope you had fun. I hope you have fun with the activities and I, I can't wait to jump back next week and do some more cool stuff. I love you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.